since fresh fish is one of the big draws here, we'll start with a story about protecting America's fishing grounds. Jason Schultz spent the day with some folks in New York protecting the waters of Long Island Sound. Some thunderstorms may produce gusty winds, heavy rainfall and hail. Chance of rain near 100 percent. It's a little bit rough today. Storm clouds are overhead and rough waters are rocking Jimmy Bloom's oyster boat. Rain, snow, doesn't matter. Jimmy has a job to do today. There are oysters ready to harvest off the bottom of Long Island Sound. Oysters don't wait for the weather to stop, I guess. The market doesn't wait. We've worked in worse than this, a lot worse than this. He also knows the five generations of family fishermen who have piloted these waters before him have faced tougher challenges than bad weather. To explore one, we have to go back to a time before Jimmy was born, the mid-1980s. Years of communities dumping sewage into the sound had taken their toll. Unhealthy water conditions killed fish by the millions and brought the fishing industry here to its knees. We had people sitting around for, for uh, you know, weeks and weeks at a time. Terry Backer is the soundkeeper for Long Island Sound. His nonprofit organization started after the water conditions here became intolerable. Well, you'd see flocculants and substances, brown foam and condoms, if, if you want to go that far, sometimes uh, floating down the water, and uh, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, you know, horrendous thing. And it wasn't just a personal hit. You know, it's bad enough for your own family, but um, uh, many of the family operations employ 10, 15 people, and you had to send them home. In 1987, the fishermen banded together to form Soundkeeper. Immediately, the group went to work to clean things up. Far away from the sound, in federal court, the fishermen began suing communities for violating the Clean Water Act. So we knew they were violating the federal law, they were violating the local law, they were violating the principles that any good, good citizen would, would employ. One of the things that was interesting is they kind of started calling us radicals, and I kind of looked around and I said, radicals? I mean, they're oystermen. How radical do they get? You know, and I looked at it and I said, well, if, if, if having water you can swim in, air you can breathe, and clean land is radical, then I guess we're radicals. Because nothing sounds more traditionally American to me than those three things. Radical isn't the first word Jimmy Bloom's dad, Norm, uses to describe himself. Norm Bloom and Sons employs about 40 people and has oysters on 15,000 acres of the Sound's bottom. More than 20 years after Soundkeeper started their work, he's seen a clear difference. They come a long way, you know, cleaning it up. Um, as I was a kid, I don't think, you know, you couldn't see your feet when you walked in the water. But uh, now it, it seems to be getting better and better. What's the best proof of improved water conditions? Good looking oysters, of course. Tell me what we're looking at here. Where are these? They're about a year old. Um, they came from our, our setting grounds in New Haven. Uh, we planted them here in April, and they'll be ready for market in two years from now. Oystermen purchase deeds to get sections of the Long Island Sound where they can harvest their oysters. To give you an idea how long the blooms have been added, they've got deeds that date back to 1846. You wake up every day, you got to go to work. So if it's good or bad, you're still going to work. Oysters aren't the only thing harvested in these waters. Lobsters, crab, flounder are all found here. So Soundkeeper's work continues. Soundkeeper provides a free pump-out service for Connecticut's recreational boaters. Crews pump out the sewage from the boats. In the past, many boat owners would just dump their waste into the sound. It's a big ocean out here. It's a lot of things, and people just assume that it would be diluted and go away. Well, we knew that wasn't true, uh, so we have uh, the pump-out program. And the group's efforts continue on land. Soundkeeper is working with researchers to develop oil and grease traps that fit into street storm drains. Um, storm drain. In this particular town, and we work a big area, there's 10,000 storm drains. 10,000 of these. Next time it rains, when you step off the curb, look down at the water, you're going to see this rainbow rivulets of oil dripping out of our cars and our motors. Uh, in there headed down. Now, what we want to do is catch that oil so it doesn't contaminate the water. And this, um, it's, a, it's a plastic box that's completely recyclable, right? Inside there is a, uh, uh, it's, a it's all trade secret stuff, but it's essentially an extruded polymer okay. that is designed to absorb oil and it won't let it out. So, so the water flows down in here yep. and it's catching it. 
bacteria in the water where you're growing oysters is undesirable. So this material has actually been treated with a, uh, a patented material that does not release chemicals into the water, but also kills bacteria as the water flows through. So 10,000 of these boxes, I, I can see that being a problem. Yeah, no, you wouldn't do 10,000. We have about 300 disp uh, displays here. What we do is we identify the places where there's the greatest amount of oil, the greatest risk for bacteria and spills, and we, we concentrate those in the area where the biggest risk is. Of course, Soundkeeper continues to keep an eye out for wastewater dumping into the sound from communities and industry. The men and women here have learned that unless they take the lead in fighting for the sound survival, their own livelihood is at risk. This is it. This, this is, is where you want to be. This is my life where I always wanted to be.